In this video, we're going to look at using substitution with indefinite integrals. Okay, so when I say substitution, usually the name that we like to kind of refer to this as is u substitution, because what we're going to end up doing is using this variable u to make substitutions inside of our integral to make it easier to integrate. All right, so what we have given here for our prompt is we want to suppose we want to rewrite the given integral using various substitutions. And this is the integral that we have here, the integral of x times root x squared plus 1, all with respect to x. All right? So with each part of the question, there are three of them, part c is hidden down below the screen right now. So what we're doing is we're finding u as a function of x that allows us to rewrite the integral as shown. Okay? So we have this original integral that we started with, right? And then we have this that we want to make it look like. Okay, so let's look at the difference between this and this, or kind of like what we may suspect to be our function u of x, all right? Well, what I see is inside of our radical here, we have this x squared being replaced by this u. So that leads me to believe that in this first question, that we let our u equal x squared. Okay, so let's see where that leads us. And so whenever we're looking for a u, just kind of before we get too far into this process, whenever we're looking for a u, we're going to look for arguments of trig functions, uh, radicands, um, powers, or like uh, if... So if we have e to some power, we're going to use that power maybe as our u, or something like that. Okay, like, like the inner function of a composition of functions usually is kind of what we're looking for. So that's kind of what we did here by picking this u, right? We picked some piece of the inner side of a composition with a rat with a square root function, okay? So here if we let u equal x squared, in order to use u substitution, we first have to pick our u, right? But then what we have to do after that is find our du, because we essentially want to be able to integrate with respect to u, right? And that's what this du allows us to do. We're integrating all this with respect to u, so we have to find our differential with respect to u, right? Well then, let's go back and use that definition of a differential that we learned a couple chapters ago at this point. And what that tells us is that if u is some function of x, then what we have is that the differential u equals the derivative of our function f, so f prime of x, times the differential of x, right? So we have is du equals f prime of x times dx, right? So let's, uh, let's attribute that to what we have here. So we said that we want to find du, so we have our du, but then we're going to take the derivative of what we define to be our function of x, right? So we said that u is a function of x, so our function of x here is x squared, the derivative of that is 2x, and then we tack on our differential, okay? So now that we have our differential of u equal 2x dx, what we're going to try to do is see where we can plug in all this stuff that we have in terms of u into this uh, original integral that we have here. Essentially what we're trying to do is make all the substitutions that we need to so we're no longer dealing with any x terms in our integral, we're only dealing with terms of u. Okay, so by nature of making u equal to x squared, we've taken care of the x term that's inside of our integral here. So what we're going to get, let me go ahead and rewrite that. So we have x root x squared plus 1 dx. So this is going to equal the integral of x root u plus 1 dx. But then what does du equal? Well, du equals something times x times dx. But we have a factor x and a factor dx right here, right? But what happens to this 2? Well, since we don't need it inside of our integral to make this substitution to say that du equals 2x, what we're essentially going to do is we're going to divide both sides by this constant multiple of 2, and we're going to get that du over 2 equals x dx. So then essentially what we have is by plugging in something into our differential in terms of u over 2 in for x dx, what this integral is going to turn into is the square root of u plus 1 times du over 2, this differential of u over 2, right? Well then, since this over 2 is again a constant multiple of du, we can use that to rewrite this as 1 half root u plus 1 with respect to u, right? So all we did was we essentially just kind of split up 
this du over 2 into the fact that it's du over 1 times 1 half, and du over 1 is just du, right? So here we have du at the end that's left, and then we just put the 1 half in front of our square root because that's just kind of standard uh, notation and usage of uh, coefficients, right? We put it in front of our scalar multiples as we put it in front of our function, right? Well, then we see that we had our original thing right here equals this thing that we started or that we wanted it to look like, right? One half square root of u plus one with respect to u. So if we let u equal x squared, we get that du equals 2x dx, and we get the correct substitution in terms of u that we wanted when we started the problem. So we're all good there, right? That takes care of part A. Let's look at part B. So in part B, we see that the transformation going from x to u is that this thing has taken the form of u, okay? So let's kind of use that same thinking that we did over here to kind of make a guess that let's let u equal x squared plus 1 and see what happens when we find the differential with respect or the differential of u and we'll see kind of how that plugs in and how that works with respect to all this stuff, okay? So again, we have u as a function of x, so du using the uh, definition of the differential is that du is f prime of x dx, or this is the same as saying the derivative of this is again just 2x dx, and this is du. So again, we look at what substitutions we can make inside of our original integral to try to make it look like this. Well, we've made our u substitution already by picking our u, right? Well then again, what we see is that dx and x are the only factors of du that we really need in order to substitute this. <laughs> So since du is 2 times x times dx, what we're going to do is divide both sides by 2 again to say that du divided by 2 is the same as saying x dx. And now, since we have all of our factors in place, we can make substitutions of this original integral in terms of x using these various plugins right here of, du, of u and du over 2. All right, so let's, let's look at how this kind of transforms. So x times root x squared plus 1 dx is going to equal the integral of x root u dx, right? Just by plugging in just our u at this point, right? We plugged in u for x squared plus 1. Well, now let's see what happens when we, when we plug in for x dx. Well, what that changes it to is the integral of the square root of u times du over 2, like we saw again in the previous example. And then so we know that we can change that to say 1 half root u du, all right? So we had this that we started with, started with this, and we want it to look like this. We got it to look like what we want it to look like. So if we let u equal x squared plus one, we get the desired integral in terms of u that we wanted. So we're all good there. This whole kind of substituting in steps right here that I did here and I also did over here, I'm doing it just to kind of illustrate what we're substituting in for what. You don't have to necessarily substitute it in piece by piece. We could essentially as you get better with this, you're going to want to start jumping from this to this step, or you may start jumping from this to this step right here. I don't know why this pen is skipping. Let me fix that. There we go. So you may start jumping straight to here once you start seeing the patterns over and over again, or you may start going here then to get to here. Either way, it's fine. What I'm doing there is kind of showing all the pieces of the substitution in there, because it's a new process that we're learning, right, of how to integrate different functions that are defined kind of weird. So I wanted to show what substitutions get made where, kind of why we're making them and how we're doing them, okay? So we've done part A and part B. Let's look at what part C tells us. Part C tells us we want to translate that original integral with respect to x into just an integral that gives us u squared du. This one's going to be kind of interesting. So in order to make this substitution work, let's do a little bit of brainstorming. Since we changed the entire integral of or with respect to x into something with respect to u, right? Like this function u squared. Let's think about what happens if we take the entire integrand to be our u, like u equals this function of x right here. Well, then if we try to find the differential u equaling f prime of this function, or like this derivative, not f prime of this function, this derivative here tacked on with the dx, the differential x, we're going to have to use the product rule to differentiate that, right? So we're going to get a lot more terms and a lot more involved than we probably need to for this problem. So instead of taking the whole integrand to be our u, let's look at making just 
the root of x squared plus 1 are u. Let's see what that leads us to. So let's let u equal root x squared plus 1. So sticking to tradition, to tradition, let's apply the definition of the differential. So we get du equals the derivative of this thing. In order to take the derivative of this, we're going to have to use the chain rule, right? So here we know that a square root is essentially raising that argument to the half power. The inner function is x squared plus 1. Derivative of that is 2x. Using the power rule here, we get 1 half times the argument to negative 1 half. And this is all with respect to x because that's our differential x after that. So here what we get is 1 over 2 root x squared plus 1 times 2x. Or with the 2s canceling out here, we get x over root x squared plus 1 dx, right? And there was supposed to be a dx tacked into there. Okay. Well, that doesn't really help us too terribly much with what we're doing inside of this problem, right? So we have u equals root x squared plus 1, so we have this entire thing. What we're trying to get is our du to equal something x dx, right? But then we've got this, not this constant multiple, but this division by our u, right? So maybe let's try a different approach here. Let's try something like manipulating our function u and its respective function of x, let's try squaring both sides and see what happens there. So if we square both sides, we're gonna get u squared equals x squared plus one, right? Just kind of by using some algebraic properties of squaring both sides there. So we get u squared equals x squared plus one. So now in order to try to find du in this type of situation here, what we're gonna have to do is originally what we had was u equals a function of x, right? Well, now we have a function of u equaling a function of x. So we can't really apply the definition of the differential to this right away, but what we can do is let some dummy variable equal our function of u, right? So we have z equals u squared. So if z is a function of u, then applying the definition of the differential, we have that dz equals 2u du. So which is this we have, say, the function is g of u, so dz equals g prime of u du. So what we did here was instead of applying the definition of the differential to just our u equals a function of x, because we had a function in terms of u, we had to allocate some other variable to hold this function of u and then apply the definition of the differential to it, right? Because this z is a function of u, so we can apply the, defini from the, the definition of the differential to it but then, what do we see here? But we have a u and a du, right? Well, we said our u is root x squared plus 1. And then our uh, du is x over root x squared plus 1 dx, right? Well, then what happens here and here with these two factors? Well, they divide away, right? Root x squared plus 1s divide away. So we get that 2u du equals 2x dx, okay? And then if we divide both sides by 2, the 2s are going to cancel out as well. So what this tells us is that u du equals x dx, all right? So we have this type of thing going on. Using this original u as our function of x right here, what we did was we took the du right here using the definition from the definition of the differential right here using the chain rule. And so we get the du equals x over root x squared plus 1. And then we kind of thought to ourselves, well, if we plug in this du straight away right here, we're going to have kind of some complications of what we get with respect to this integrand, right? We're going to kind of get some interesting stuff happening. Like it's not going to plug in nicely like it did with all these other constants that we could just divide or move away from the stuff that we were interested in, right? So instead, what we did was we looked at a way to maybe kind of manipulate this du a little bit to give us a much nicer substitution. So what we did was we squared both sides and got this stuff. So we have z as a function of u, applied the definition of the differential to this thing, to where we got dz equals 2u du, and then we used what we had from earlier, right? We knew that u was still root x squared plus 1, and du was still all this stuff, right? So what that gives us is when we cancel out these factors of root x squared plus 1 over inside of here and then divide away these factors of 2, we get that x dx is just u du. 
So if we make this original substitution here of u equaling root x squared plus 1, what this original integral is going to change into is doing this whole step-by-step -step substitution that I've done in the previous couple of pieces. We get that x u dx right there just by substituting in uh, u for our square root function. And then we know that x dx here is going to be equal to u du, right? So what we get here is u times u du, or the integral of u squared du, which is what we wanted to end up with after making some substitutions inside of this integral, right? So we took u to be root x squared plus 1 like this, and whenever we did that, we were left with this x dx that needed to be accounted for with some form or fashion with our du, and with the manipulations that we did and the various definitions of the differentials that we made over here and kind of applied them in their own ways, we found that this x dx factor can also be written as u du. So in terms of u, it's the same thing, just u du, because of the way of all of our uh, differentials worked out to be, right? So whenever we did that, we got the integral of u times u du with respect to u, or the integral of u squared with respect to u, and that's what we wanted to get at right there, right? So looking back at these three pieces, or these three parts of this question that we looked at just like in the side of this problem, we looked at how the same integral can be rewritten in many different ways, in or and that allows us to take our integral in many different ways, right? If we make this substitution, we're still left with some stuff under the integrand, so maybe, or maybe not under the integrand, under the radical, I'm getting all kinds of terms confused today, and under the radical like this, so maybe we need to do something else, like a different kind of substitution, to make this integration easier on ourselves. If we make this substitution, we see that we get a function of u just kind of taking the square root of it like this with respect to u, and trying to integrate this is a lot easier than trying to integrate this, but if we get very creative, we can also see that we can manipulate our u in a couple different ways here by taking u to be this entire thing, and because we have x dx left over, we're left with just this integral of u squared du to try to integrate, which is much easier than trying to integrate this, which is much easier than trying to integrate this, right? So the kind of the bottom line of this whole problem is just letting you guys know that there's multiple different substitutions you can make inside of a problem that will lead you to multiple different integrals to take with respect to you, but some of them could be easier and some of them could be harder than other paths that you choose. Neither one of them is necessarily wrong, so long as you can integrate the integral that you come up with with respect to you, if that makes sense. So it doesn't matter which path you take, so long as the integral that you come up with in terms of u is something that you can easily integrate and then make the substitutions of u and x back, or kind of like switch it back to in terms of x after you do the integration.